Welcome back to Jash Reads, the series where I read a book cover to cover and discuss it chapter by chapter. So, yay! And I hope you're all having a, a lovely week because, you know, the the impact of everything that's been going on for the past few months, you know, house flooding, uh, <laughs> Ryan going to the ER, then ICU, then hospital, then luckily back home, and where he actually died for a moment. Now, uh, all, and now he's, you know, trying to get his blood sugar under control, which means he can be, his temper can be a little worse. And I have to remind myself, it's not personal, it's just, you know, he's trying to deal with things, and... <gasps> Yeah, I mean, I do have boundaries. It's not like, oh, I'll just let him walk all over me, whatever, but... Yeah, I have to, I have to remind myself that. And the past few days, my body has been like, Nope! I'm just, nope! So I am really... <laughs> mainly, I, my eating schedule is not normal now, which has not happened in a while, but anyways... The book we will continue to read is... Ah! Sorry. Sorry, Ta Tobias. Sorry there. Sorry there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, surprisingly, that isn't the name of the book we're continuing to read, which is Animorphs... Uh. Animorphs number 13, The Change by K.A. Applegate. I believe the chapter we will be reading, let's see, I believe is going to be chapter, yeah, chapter 8. And oh, it looks like I've got the lighting pretty well. No worry, once I decide to start reading, I'm probably going to be like, this looks all off. <laughs> because I can never be happy, apparently. But yeah. I have been uh, really stressed out as of late. Just everything that has happened has, uh, you know, decided to uh, get to me more than already has, so. Yippee. You know, fun times. Uh, so. Luckily, I had a you know, therapy session this week, so we sort of discussed, you know, just basically to keep myself happy. You know, find little things I can do. And one of the things is going to be, of course, listening to more Taylor Swift, because for some reason, that music is my happy place. Okay. I'm trying to hide this from a above. Okay. Let's make sure we get all that done before we... we start reading for the evening. Because I like to make this Jash Read series now a combination of both reading and doing Minecraft. Try and just get the outside here. Leave no stone unturned. Do not fall down. Even though I'm in creative mode and it really doesn't matter. I guess I have weird standards. Let's see if I can get my horse from here. This besides staying hidden, it still needs to be a little functional. Okay. Let's okay, get off that way. I think just Okay, this will probably be the least hidden part, but again, accessibility. Oh. 
just hide it with a okay can't put greenery there maybe put a little more vines over here here just so you know it won't stick out again like oh it's a little odd but Okay. Yeah, see it's it's not just that one area. It's a bunch. I really my pretties. Okay, let's go down into the stable and get this dramatic reading underway. Let's see. Yeah. Me and my horse. <laughs> oh god, I love horses. Okay, let me drink one of my, the second of my frappes. They, I guess they made a little too much, and so I got an extra frappe, which is really not healthy for me. I got some water. Let me put the water on the table next to the phone. Yeah. Because I do need to drink water, keep hydrated. But I love the caffeine rush. Is not healthy. I have drank in too much frappe today. I don't care. I can't really drink alcohol anymore. So this is my version of getting fucking drunk. Yay! I actually shouldn't be drinking this much caffeine in a day, but oh well. No one's perfect. Least of all me. Okay, let me get all adjusted. I think our horsey warsey is going to make the stream all about him. <sighs> okay, so I'm about to start reading Animorphs 13, The Change by Kay Applegate, Chapter 8. Okay, stretch! I'm not procrastinating! Oh, and uh, just as a warning, I'm doing the whole thing with putting Danny, Den aka Daenerys, one of my cocktails, in timeout every now and again and trying something. So just be aware, timers probably may go off once and you have to put her in timeout again. So just be aware, there may be that chaos. And I guess I have procrastinated long enough. So let's go. A wife? Excuse me, you said wife? Marco asked incredulously. You mean there's such a thing as a female Hortvajir? I guess so, I said. We didn't really have time to ask. It was late afternoon. We were all in Cassie's barn. Actually, I was in the rafters of Cassie's barn, looking down at the rest of the group. Jake, Cassie, Marco, Axe, and Rachel back in human form again. Axe was in his own natural Andalite body. It's a danger to have him there because we can never allow anyone to see the Axe Man. I mean, one look at Eximile Escorth Istel at the two movable stock eyes on top of his head and the deadly scorpion tail and the centaur body, and you know he's not exactly a local boy. But it was worth the risk, since he knew more about hork than any of us did. Besides, I was providing security. From my place up in the rafters, yeah. I could see out through the hayloft to Cassie's house. And since I have excellent hearing as well as sight, I know if anyone approached the barn. Cassie's barn is actually the wildlife rehabilitation clinic. It is full of every kind of local wild animal. The wire cages are piled high all around the barn. Both Cassie's parents are veterinarians. Her mom works at the gardens, which is this big amusement park and zoo complex. 
Her father runs the clinic with a lot of help from Cassie. They take an injured or sick wild animals. And right now, beneath me in the cages, there was a sampling of all the animals that lived in the area. Opossums, voles, rabbits, skunks, foxes, raccoons, squirrels, and so on. Many of them would have made a nice snack for me. But Cassie and I have an arrangement about that. I don't need her patience. In addition to the land animals, there were bats and birds. Cassie actually rescues pigeons and crows and even jays. I have nothing against pigeons, but I don't like crows and ravens and jays. They're like the gangsters of the bird world. Plus, they're smart. They can work together to mob peaceful raptors like me. Sometimes a bunch of them will actually try to steal a kill from me. And believe me, you get six or eight big bat jays or crows attacking you all at once, and it can be very annoying. <sighs> but that's another story. How exactly do you tell a man hork bajir from a woman hork bajir? <laughs> Marco asked. Do the women put makeup on their wrist blades? Do they use nail polish on those big nasty toes of theirs? Rachel rolled her eyes. We didn't have a chance to go into it, all right? We barely got the one hork bajir to the cave. I mean, do female hork bajir cry at chick movies? Marco went on, talking mostly to himself. Do they get all goo goo when they see a baby? What about the female? Jake asked Rachel and me. R Rachel shrugged and looked away. We don't know, I said. We saw her get knocked into the ditch. That was it. Man, this whole thing stinks. It's a trap. It's a setup. Marco said. But I think the real question is, do female Horkvigir get all weird around bugs and snakes? I don't think so. About the trap, I mean. Weird around bugs and snakes? Cassie asked with a raised eyebrow. Is that how girls are, Marco? With that, she reached into a low drawer beneath the bottom row of cages. A second later, a snake was lightly tossed through the air in Marco's direction. <laughs> Get it off me! Cassie retrieved the harmless garden snake and put it back in its drawer while everyone laughed. Except Axe, who doesn't always get human hu humor. Even Marco had to laugh. Oh, oh, that was so not fair. Funny? Yes. Fair? No. Can we Please, act more mature here. Sure, Marco, Rachel said. Why don't you leave and we'll automatically be a more mature group? Could we stick to business? Jake asked, but he was still smiling from the snake thing, so no one took him too seriously. Why would a yerk? Even a yerk inside a hork bajir want to run away. Marco asked. Sooner or later, he has to get back to the yerk pool. It doesn't make any sense. Excuse me for a moment. Okay, now I'm ready. Rachel sighed. Marco, how dumb are you? Don't you get it? These aren't controllers. There is no yerk. Somehow these two Hork-Bajir are free. 
Hang on, I'm, I seem to be having a burping fit right now. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Anyways, okay, now I'm ready. And I'm sorry in advance of any other light burping I will probably do. Whew, let's continue. Cassie looked thoughtful. Isn't it kind of a coincidence that you just happen to be in the area where the hork were escaping? Yes, I said, definitely. Especially since I wasn't even heading there. I was actually trying to go somewhere else. I saw the two stock eyes on Axe's head swing up to focus on me with new interest. His main eyes stayed on Jake. Cassie gave me a tilted head, puzzled look. You mean... But Rachel interrupted. Look, we need to decide what to do about this. We've got this hork male in a cave. But the Yurks will keep looking for him. And I have to tell you, this hork is not exactly Stephen Hawking. Who? Cassie asked. It, he is a human physicist, Max responded. I've read some of his writing. He is very brilliant, but also very wrong about several things. For example, when he refers to the structures of atoms in, Jake threw up his hands in exasperation. Is there any chance we could stick to business? Okay, I'm going to drink a little bit of water. Hang on a moment. I may have to switch to water for the next few hours. Put the frappe in the fridge and eat. I should also probably eat some form of dinner. Again, my eating has been all out of whack. Like, I am not hungry at all, even though all I've had today was one Pop-Tart and a large fry from McDonald's. Now I'll have to force myself to snack a little bit so I can still keep food in me because apparently my body's health is determined by food. I'm doing a dramatic reading. Just so you don't think I'm speaking to you. Okay, and uh, back to the reading. I remember when Jake used to be fun, Marco said in a loud whisper. Now he's such a grown-up. I was never fun, Jake said with a tolerant smile. No, you were never smart, but you were always fun, Marco teased. The question is... What do we do about this hork Bajir? Rachel asked. He's sitting out there in a cave in the woods, moaning about his Kalashi. What do we do with him? We all looked at Axe like he'd have the answer. I have never known of a free hork Bajir, Axe said. They've been slaves of the Yurks for a long time. But it is possible. Maybe somehow, while this hork yurk was in the yurk pool, the hork managed to escape. It is possible. His wife as well. In which case, these may be the only free hork in the entire galaxy. The only two free members of their species. Imagine. Cassie whispered. Imagine being the only two free humans in all the world. Somehow, no one felt like messing around anymore. Even Marco looked thoughtful. But the Yurks won. Humans would be no different than the hork Absolute slaves of the Yurk Empire. So, what do we do with the only free hork in the galaxy? Marco asked. What does the 
work that you want to do. Ask... Oh, hang on, let me start that again. What does the hork bajir want to do? Ask, ask me and Rachel. Rachel and I stared blankly at each other. You know, I admitted, we never asked. <sighs> then I guess that's step one, Jake said. Let's find out what the hork bajir wants. Everyone agreed, but I saw that Cassie was still troubled. Under her breath, she muttered, And then let's find out why Tobias was somewhere he didn't mean to be. I don't think anyone else heard her, but I did. Why had I been there? And that's the end of chapter 8. I was gonna either burp or barf. Luckily, neither. Okay, let's go front and start. Okay, so. Hey, I think this is really well hidden. Oh, sorry, Tobi Tobias. Like, only this brief opening over here is seen. Okay. So. God. Is Tobias still on? No, he's not. So, about this chapter, they. Not Axe and Rachel. Tobias and Rachel have finally gotten, you know, at least one hork bajir safe. And now they're, you know, just discussing with the group. Oh. <sighs> Sorry, I'm like getting, getting a bunch of different thoughts in my head right now. Actually, let me get the carpeting colors I want. Let's see. Trans flag colors. Okay. okay. I think we can... Let's see, just... Let's see, what's... Non-binary flag colors. Let me just figure this out. I think we'll stick with the black and actually we could since there's already the white here we can just go per go black no purple I think that would add a little bit more color sorry these are saying <laughs> I'm trying to do crap building as well as dramatic reading so. so yeah they're all discussing uh, what to do about the hork bajir and like at the end Tobias is like ah oh, shit yeah we we never you know and all the time we've never actually asked what you know they want and I found Axe's reaction of you know why don't you just ask as something he he never really thought of before and you know so it's very awkward for him to go yeah, how that seems like a good suggestion. <laughs> like he, I see it more as Axe being at, knowing he's, he has really no idea what to do. And so he's just flinging everything out. As soon as he's, it's like out of his head, it's like, okay, I, 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 does this sound stupid? Is this stupid? <laughs> So yeah, I tried to read that like him going, what the fuck am I just saying? Yeah. Because Axe, even though he's one of the 
very rare good andalites he was raised in you know this this culture of andalites are the best thing since sliced bread or you know whatever the andalite equivalent of that would be so thinking of someone that he considers lesser would just be like why should i consider their opinion on this so and then when rachel makes her comment about stephen hawking and cassie is like who's he i honestly i just found it more logical for that to be a sarcastic comment that, you know, Axe just didn't pick up on because... Like, I'm not saying everyone's going to have an encyclopedic knowledge about who Stephen Hawking is and what he's done, but... I mean, I think it's more logical that, you know, someone would at least pick up on Oh, that's another way of saying, you know, s comparing oneself to Stephen Hawking is saying a person is really dumb or really smart, you know, depending on context. So I don't see how Cassie would, you know, realistically say who's he and be serious. But of course, Axe, who's not going to pick up on all these social cues. You know, he's going to go, oh, I'll explain it to you. And I think he's also going to be, you know, very happy to say, it. go, I, I actually know about this human. Look at how much I'm learning and appreciating your culture. I will say that Marco not realizing there's female hork bajir is a little odd now in our much more progressive you know the present is a little more progressive but you know back in the 90s i would God, that, seems, that feels like a lifetime ago, and I am not going to do the math to figure out how long ago that was, because that is going to make me feel so old. But, you know, as a teen, or younger growing, well, the Animorphs are teens, so being a teen in the 90s, you, you would think about reproduction purely as humans do, you know, needing you know, a biological female and a biological male. And just for clarification, I think of sex as more of, you know, the physical and I would say the primary and secondary sex organs because, well, we can't get tested, not all, it's not normal to be tested for chromosomes and that's a whole nother thing. So, no, when I say female, I'm going for primary and secondary sex organs and not chromosomes because we can't normally get, we don't normally get tested for those. Maybe that will change in the future, I do not know. Okay. But anyways. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get off my tangent clarification, but anyways, growing up in the 90s, you know, as a teen, you'd think of reproduction in terms of male and female. You know, you like it wouldn't I think be normal to really think about any other sort of reproduction. So for Marco to be going, hey, what about, there are female Horkvajirs just seems uh, a little odd. And so, I don't know, maybe Marco is just, Marco uses humor as his coping mechanism. So I think 
with some of his remarks, especially let me get back to one specific instance that I am thinking of. Okay, where is it? Okay. When he goes, man, this whole thing stinks, it's a trap, it's a setup, and then adds, but I think the real question is, do female hork bajir get all weird around bugs and snakes? So I think... Hang on. I think he might honestly just be coping, just distracting himself, because this is a weird situation, and it's like, okay, what do I do, what do I do? Okay, humor, joke. Cope! Cope! Coping mechanism! Ooey! Okay, let me make sure I... Okay. So that's the only logical thing I can think of for Marco. Not real... You know, making all these... Jokes about... Female hork bajir I like how Cassie really picks up on the why was Tobias there. Like, everyone else is concerned about could there actually be free Hork Bajir? What are we going to do about this Hork Bajir? And Cassie is, <laughs> is looking and going, but why was Tobias there if he, you know, didn't mean to be? Like, what's going on? Yeah, Cassie is... Cassie is fucking awesome. She cuts through everything and... This seems to... I was like, what will I do about the carpet here and here not being the same? But this is a room, so I'll only focus, focus on the carpeting and the hallways for now. Anyways. Cassie just sees through things and is like, hey, we really do need to be concerned about this, even though the rest of the group at the moment isn't really that focused. So uh, that's it for the chapter discussion. In a moment, we will be getting on to the links. So. Before we do that, let's ask the question of this video. Let's see. Let's see, what should we focus on? Okay, let's see. Good question, yeah. So what do you... Th the question for today's video is... What do you feel about Cassie, you know, sort of bypassing the whole... What should we do about this Hork Bajir? And going, why is Tobias, you know... Why was Tobias there in the first place? What do you think about you know, that part of her character? Well, no. What do you think about that part of your character? What do you think that says about her character? Do you like it? Don't you? Please comment below. Also, comment below with any other questions or comments you have about this chapter. Stop! And if, you know... Like, if I didn't mention something that happened in this chapter and you'd be curious to know my opinions on, please comment down below. Please also note that I'm I'm hoping against hope I can bring in new Animorphs fans via these dramatic readings, so please no major spoilers in the comments section.
And uh, we will be getting to the links in just a moment, so yeah, please stick around. Please. I need attention. I need so much attention. Before we get started on the links, some of the links are Amazon Associate links, which means that if you buy something via an Amazon associate link of mine, I get a little bit of, you know, profits from you doing so. So not only do you get to support some, you know, your, the original creators, you can support me at the same time. Okay, so uh, let's get started. The first link is, of course, to buy your very own copy of Animorphs number 13, The Change by Kay Applegate. I definitely drank too many frappe stick. Uh, I, my body is rebelling. But anyways, first link is to buy your very own copy of Animorphs number 13 the change by k applegate please remember that this dramatic reading is just a little adaptation so i'm so i'm making choices you know on such as the stephen hawking part you know i'm making interpretations and then vocalizing them and i'm also sometimes limit god damn it danny Hang on, I have to put her in time out again. Come on. Stay, stay. Hey Google, set timer for 35 minutes. So anyways, I'm limited by my talent or lack thereof. And sometimes, yeah, I do this live now, so uh, sometimes I practice and things do not turn out exactly as I plan for them in rehearsal. It's sometimes embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, so you should, I would, Animorphs is my favorite book series of all time, so I'm never going to say no to you, to someone picking up Animorphs. It's, it's a series that honestly holds up equally well when you're a kid as when you're an adult. It hits two different ways. Really neat. So. I feel like I'm gonna barf. And the next link is to my Twitter. On my Twitter we can discuss everything animorphs you know i'm never going to get bored talking about animorphs trust me just be aware that unlike this dramatic reading series i will freely admit spoilers uh, animorphs spoilers on my twitter account so if you want to talk to me about animorphs but have certain things you don't want spoiled, please, please tell me so I don't end up ruining your initial reading experience. So, would hate for that to happen, honestly. Okay, next link is to my Patreon. My Patreon helps support these dramatic readings, streams, every odd thing I'm doing on my blog, the books I'm releasing, and this month I will be releasing my latest Kafka's Men series. Yeah, it looks like that tree's just grown in here. Yeah, yeah so it's... So yeah, basically everything I do, if you, you know, become a patron of my Patreon, you'll be able to s help support these dramatic readings and everything else I do. And I have two tiers, 
one dragonborn where you one dollar tier where you can see red bubble designs before I release them. And then there's also Ravenheart where you get things such as seeing a sneak peek of my latest book's first chapter. Well you've got hang on, <laughs> I'm sorry, I yeah, I recently actually changed the tiers. Or was it... No, the first chapter is for every Patreon member. I think it's the cover reveal. Hang on. God, I, re I recently changed the tiers because I'm like, hey, I can actually start offering stuff for tiers again. So yeah, Jashikin's creating a blog. Okay. Okay, yes, I am 18 or older. Signing me in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, don't join. Don't join. Yeah. Ah, okay. So the first chapter. So the sneak peek at the late at the first chapter of my latest books is something if you're a paying member of my patreon you get you know get and for ravenheart which is five dollars a month you get to see the new ebook covers so yeah as soon as i was like oh you get to get the first chapter for free i'm like wait a minute i don't think that's what i did I, i'm sorry folks i at least i realized there was a mistake and i owned up to it Okay. Like, it's okay to make mistakes, people. We all make the mistakes. But the point is that you correct yourself afterwards and admit fault. That's the important thing. Not that I'm always perfect on that front, but I do my best just like anyone else. Okay. Okay, don't drink the frappe. I was going for the frappe and I'm like, no, it's going to be bare for my tummy if I drink water. <laughs> and now, last but not least, the last link I will read will be for my original book series, which is a reverse harem series, and reverse harem is a subgenre of the romance of romance so if you like a little romance a little body horror a shitload of angst if you like superheroes i think you will you know have a good time and again my kafka's men 7 is going to be released the 11th of this month and if anyone is wondering about that yes i'm american Hi. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, if you're wondering why I'm releasing <laughs> the 11th of this month, I I don't know. I just found it really funny for some reason. And I have sometimes have little joy in my life as is. So yeah. Uh, right now, Kafka's Men 7 is up for pre-release, and for those of you who prefer physical copies, there, Amazon won't allow me to do pre-orders for physical copies, but they will allow me a schedule, so the paperback version will be released at the same time as the Kindle versions. So yeah. And that is all the links and I'm going to be doing a little bit more building here and then I'll be ending the stream and possibly going to sleep. Depending on what my stomach wants to do. My stomach is not very communicative to me these past few days. So that's fun. <laughs> Excitement! I keep 
keep on doing that accidentally. Jesus. I was feeling really sleepy before filming and now I'm like, I can stay awake. My body does not know what it wants lately. Anyways, let's see. Okay, that will be it for today's video. I hope you're all having a good day. Is this Friday or is it Thursday? God damn it. Okay, it's Friday, so I hope you had a good week. I hope you have a relaxing weekend. And keep happy. And I will see you next time. And until then, goodbye.